Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today we've got the brand new Wahoo Kicker, new kicker. It's technically just the new kicker. I mean, technically it's a fifth generation kicker, a kicker five, uh, or a kicker 20, 2020. Uh, however you want to call it, the label calls it the kicker 20. Uh, Wahoo internally calls it the kicker V5. Publicly, like marketing wise, it's just the new kicker. In any case, it's got four new things, four new features that I'm gonna dive in throughout the video in a lot of depth. That's sort of what I do. Uh, number one is it's got new compressing feet that you see out here. Uh, it comes in three different feet styles and they compress uh, to give you a little bit more motion, a little bit being the key thing there. Uh, and number two is they've gone ahead and done a wired connectivity option right there. There's a little port to plug a wire in. That's also got some funny little caveats as well. Number three, is they've increased the accuracy rating from plus or minus 2% to plus or minus 1%. And in conjunction with that, they've ditched the spin down, roll down procedure. Uh, I mean, it's also actually technically there, but it's not being used. Anyways, there's a lot of technicalities with all these four features. In fact, there's no like clear cut, easy, brand new marketing feature with no if then but statement behind it. Uh, however, one good thing is that everything else remains the same. Everything that you know and love about the kicker in the past is identical. Uh, and don't worry, we'll talk about like kicker 18 gate and all the mess the fiasco of the past later in this video uh, but for now all the other specs are essentially the same so dual amp plus bluetooth smart amp plus fec control bluetooth smart control uh, axle compatibility 130 and 135 for quick release and 142 and 148 by 12 for through axle the adapter comes with it includes 11 speed cassette this one's pretty dirty because i've been using it for a while now uh, but that is there you can swap out the cassette if you want to for 8 9 10 11 or 12 speed uh, and and with a 12 speed, you're gonna probably be using an XD or XDR uh, cassette adapter as well that you have to buy from Wahoo. Those are the same adapters as a Kicker 18. So if you've got that and you for some reason want to upgrade to this, then you could do that no problem. Max incline is 20% and max support resistance is 2200 watts. So there you go, that's, that's the gist of the kicker in the past. Again, it's very much identical. The flywheel is the same. All that stuff remains identical to the past uh, kicker 2018. Meanwhile, the one minor thing that has changed is the box, very slightly. Uh, it's gone from being gray and white to black and white. Uh, so here you see in the box itself. Now on top of the box, you will find the What's New panel that Wahoo always puts on their boxes, uh, listing the same things I just listed a second ago. Once we've dumped all the parts out on the table, uh, which are pretty well protected in that foam there, you'll go ahead and debag everything, and then you'll find yourself two spare access feet of different sizes, bringing in total three feet that you have. One's already installed on the kicker itself. Uh, you've also got a power adapter there. You've got a manual, a warranty guide, two stickers, through axle adapters, a 10 speed cassette spacer in case you swap out this cassette here for a 10 speed, uh, as well as a small tool for keeping disc brakes from compressing when you remove the rear wheel because you take your wheel off to put it on the trainer itself. Notably, you will not find a cadence sensor in the box uh, and the Kicker 18 initially came with one and that's because they did not broadcast cadence at the time. But these days with a firmware update a year ago, Wahoo does broadcast cadence from the trainer itself. So there's no cadence sensor in that box anymore. So let's talk about the feet. Uh, so you see there are feet on there right there. Um, and these are also feet here and they're different sizes. Uh, now, these are called access feet and they allow a little bit of compression. The idea behind these essentially came from tennis balls. People in the kind of DIY community have been using tennis balls for a long time. Basically put them where the feet are and it allows a little bit of compression. These are a more industrial version of tennis balls. Uh, now there are three sizes of feet. And if we slide this around right here, um, you'll see that the way the feet works is that they slide off. So we just do this. Oop, there we go. Uh, and there's essentially this piece that you may have seen in the past on typical kicker feet. Uh, and then you've got here this rubber portion that stays the same on all of them. And then there are these feet that are interchangeable. Uh, three sets are mentioned by your weight primarily or by how much you want to have the kicker move. Uh, so I initially tried the one that was the biggest feet uh, for my weight and I found it didn't do anything. Uh, so Wahoo recommended using the smallest ones to get the full feel of things. And, and that's the piece that I tested later on. In addition to these two feet, which by the way, you can buy separately. Uh, you buy the whole kit of feet at 79 bucks, works on any pass kicker, not a kicker core or a kicker snap because the foot design there is significantly different. Uh, but for the normal kickers, all the way back to the original kicker from 2012, will work with these feet. Uh, you'll also see if I can do this without flipping over off the ground here. Um, there's dampening pads now along this entire back bottom strip. 
as well as up here, uh, again, a cushiony material uh, that goes ahead and that reduces vibrations as well as noise on harder floor surfaces. But does it work? Well, for that, let's jump over the bike real quick. Okay, so let's talk about the axis feet. Uh, now, Wahoo, you know, to be fair, I said that basically these aren't going to do much on a trainer mat, and I'm going to pretty much show you that exactly. Uh, so I've got the smallest feet installed right now, which will give you the most play. The larger feet will give you less play. So I want to show you like the best case scenario, which is theoretically up to five uh, degrees. And so you can see here that it's already kind of compressing into the trainer mat itself. If I lean right or left, yeah, there's some maybe barely visible compression of the feet. That's the black part that's compressing, by the way, primarily. But the mat is taking the majority of the compression. Uh, and if I just kind of artificially sway left and right here, you know, you'll see that again, it's the mat, not the feet, because the mat's absorbing that. Even if I do a bit of a sprint, it's still mostly the mat. Uh, so virtually no difference at all uh, in my riding and testing on the mat itself. But let's remove the mat and see what happens on this hard concrete floor. I guess there's not really soft concrete, but this is thick. It's legit concrete. Okay, so now we got the mat moved out of the way here. What does this look like down there? Well, not much. Like you can see there's a tiny bit of compression if I artificially move my hips a bunch and you know tilt a little bit this way and this way. Now I interrupt this uh, session to note that some of you are probably saying, hey, the feet are actually going off the ground and so they should be on the ground. Well, when you've got compressing feet, when one compresses, the other goes off the ground. So that's why it's doing that. Both feet were actually extended to their fullest on the ground and a hard surface before I started. But of course, as you compress, which actually shows the compression quite nicely, you will see the fact that the other foot raises just slightly above the ground, a millimeter or something like that, uh, which makes complete and total sense. Science for the win. It's more than the existing kicker wood with its hard wheels, which I'll show you in just a second here. But I mean, this isn't, this isn't a lot, like not much there. If I do a quick sprint. There's not a ton of movement, but Wahoo does say that it will reduce vibrations in the flooring. So if you were on maybe wood floors, an apartment with a smaller floor structure, that vibrated a lot, this would help. Keep in mind there's also the kind of compression padding on the front of the strut, the back underneath the kicker, as well as the feet itself. I can't really test that here. This concrete floor is a foot thick, so nobody's hearing anything below this thing. Okay, I'm bringing the old kicker 2018 in to show you the feet on that one. And you can see if I go left and right, I mean, there's still a little bit of compression there. like. Even on the old character with the old feet, there's a tiny bit of compression I'm feeling and seeing there. Not much, but a little bit. So we're rolling to a lazy sprint here. And you can slightly feel that the floor isn't absorbing as much. I know it's a weird thing to like try to explain, but it's just the other one you can feel a little bit more um, other vibrations are being held back on the trainer uh, or absorbed into the, the uh, pads there, but barely, like barely, barely. Overall, yeah, I think tennis balls are probably a better option. Okay, with my access feet thoughts complete, now is a great time to whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Moving along to the next new feature, it is this wired connectivity option right there. So if I can move this around without like dropping it somehow, you might be able to see it right there, right there. There we go. That, um, that port there allows you to connect it to the interwebs, uh, sort of. You might be thinking, hey, great. It is a ethernet port that I can plug into my router or whatever I've got, uh, but, but you'd be wrong. Instead, you gotta go back to the days of dial up and grab yourself a telephone cable, RJ11, to stick it in that hole right there. You connect this other side to a telephone, you dial Zwift, you're in, connected, and the performance is probably about the same as it is today. Good to go at that point. That accessory will then allow you to take this RJ11 cable and turn it into this RJ45 cable with some smarts in there uh, that makes the kicker go online on your local network. So why would you want to do that? Well, the main reason is that this tries to eliminate dropouts and connectivity issues for folks in what are so-called high RF environments. Meaning if you're living in a tall apartment building with tons and tons of people and Wi-Fi networks, 
AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart can sometimes struggle uh, connectivity-wise. And so by having a wired option, something that you can plug right into your home network and then get onto the rest of your network uh, from a you know, Zwift, et cetera, standpoint, you might be able to have better connectivity options. The challenge is right now, that adapter doesn't exist. Wahoo says maybe later on this year, or hopefully later on this year, uh, and probably south of 100 bucks, they're saying. So they said for sure less than 100 bucks. Uh, but again, pricing to be determined and app compatibility also to be determined. So this is something that could be super beneficial for people that are having connectivity issues. Now, since this isn't all ready today, we'll use old school pairing method, which is AMP Plus or Bluetooth Smart. Here you can see on Zwift pairing up on Apple TV uh, with Bluetooth Smart to the kicker. You'll note that this includes the power as well as the cadence data. Uh, and then Zwift, of course, will determine the speed. This is also true on Trainer Road. Here I've got it paired up again on Bluetooth Smart uh, with an iPad. I've also done it in the Sufferfest app as well. No issues, that's the app that Wahoo owns. And I've written in all three of these apps uh, since July without any issues from a connectivity, et cetera, standpoint. Uh, all that's working just fine. And while we will look at accuracy a bit later, first let's jump on the bike and talk about noise and road feel and that kind of fun stuff. Okay, so here we are on the bike. Now I've got the smallest access feed installed right this second. So that means that I will have the most most play side to side. There's not much play, but there's most play side to side. And I'm on the flats of uh, Watopia here in the desert course. And I want to show you a little bit of acceleration and deceleration of the flywheel, what it looks like. And then from there, we'll dive into some of the audio aspects of it. So you can see here, as I ramp up, water just comes up nicely. Things feel normal. No real issues. Like this is, this is a kicker that you know and love from the past because the flywheel is exactly the same. There's no changes there. Nothing is different from a flywheel acceleration, deceleration standpoint. As I let out the power, it feels pretty nice. Now let's talk about audio. Audio on smart trainers like this is all about speed. The faster you go, the louder it'll be. Not the more wattage you put out. I could be doing a thousand watts in erg mode in the right gear combination, and it'll be whisper silent. Or I could be doing 150 watts in the wrong gear combination, and it'll be just slightly above whisper silent. On this fifth generation kicker, the only thing you're gonna actually hear is the drivetrain itself and essentially how clean my gearing is. And right now I'm going with like so-so clean, not great clean, but clean enough that most people wouldn't shake their head too much, hopefully. Now, right now you're listening to it on my lav mic and that's because I'm in a super echoey room. So I have this to try to minimize some of the noise and bouncing of the noise. But I'm gonna switch over to the on-camera mic so you can hear what it actually sounds like. And since we hit the sprint right here, no better time than now to go ahead and give it a bit of a sprint. So you can see there, cruising over 900 watts, and really no difference in audio, like it sounds the same. Okay, with the on-bike portions all complete, let's talk about accuracy. Uh, now, Wahoo made two major claims as part of the Kicker uh, V5 2020 new Kicker. Number one is they've increased the accuracy claim from plus or minus 2% to plus or minus 1%. And number two is they've got rid of the spin down, sort of. Uh, so the spin down is still technically there. The difference though is that Wahoo just discards the data. Uh, and this is really aimed at reducing cheating and races more so than probably like accuracy side of stuff. Uh, so with the existing kickers, you could do some very easy hacks that would go ahead and basically boost your power in a race. Uh, with this here, this will override those calibration commands within one to two minutes. So it'll accept your calibration command. You think you're doing great. It does it, it pacifies you. Uh, but behind the scenes, it says, mm, nope, and discards it about one to two minutes later as the auto calibration routines kick over. But is that accurate? And that's the part that I've been digging in for weeks and weeks and weeks on uh, to test. So let's go jump over to the computer and look at the data. Now for this review, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. What I've got here is my power accuracy analysis section as part of my written view, which goes through tons of different data sets I've done on different bikes and power meters and comparisons. Uh, and I'm gonna kind of walk through some of the key takeaways from this. 
So first, looking at erg mode, in particular train auto, but also a sufferfest, things look pretty solid there. One of the big things I look at in erg mode is responsiveness, and I do a 30 by 30 test, meaning 30 seconds on at a higher interval, in this case about 456 watts, and then it dips down for 30 seconds to 150 watts. Uh, the Kicker 2020 was responding up to that 450 or so watts in about three to four seconds in most cases. There was a single outlier of five seconds and a couple cases at two to three seconds, but uh, three to four seconds is mostly fine there. Uh, and if I look at the actual power accuracy of that data in terms of how did it match against the Quark and the Favero uh, Asioma pedals, that also looked really good in erg mode. There's really no issues. Things are very, very smooth there uh, across multiple erg mode sets, including in the Sufferfest app as well. But what about Zwift? Well, that's where things kind of fell apart a little bit, uh, in particular in minor surges. In this case, you can see every time I slightly surge my power, the kicker overcommitted. Uh, so these were like three to 400 watt surges. So I'm not talking sprints at, you know, 800 watts plus, uh, but just kind of minor changes there. And every single time in yellow, you see that it overcommits the power. And in some cases that was up by 75 watts over the baseline. Uh, but in most cases, it was like 20 to 50 watts, give or take. Uh, and this happened all the time. Uh, it also happened at low cadence too. So anything down like 50 RPM, which I recognize is pretty rare, but I did it in one case on a climb, then it also overcommitted the power. And this is a pattern I saw over and over and over again that I didn't see in erg mode. So looking back at the Sufferfest, for example, these sets look beautiful. Like these are spot on, super clean, really, really good there. Uh, and in sim mode, so again, the kind of normal Zwift mode that you'd be in, uh, it wasn't an issue until those minor surges. Major sprints were actually pretty close, but it was just those minor surges that weren't very close. Okay, so can Wahoo fix the accuracy? Probably. Uh, if I look back at like the history of Wahoo trainers, almost every one of their trainers has had surge type accuracy issues for the first month or two. So I'm actually not that worried about that. And Wahoo says as well, they believe they can fix this in an upcoming firmware update. Still, that probably brings up one final question. Has Wahoo solved the reliability issues that plagued the Kicker 2018 and the Kicker Core? And there was a lot of people impacted by that. Thousands and thousands of people had issues with their Kickers that killed their Kickers outright. Uh, and I asked Wahoo that and they said, essentially nothing has changed between this unit and a recent kicker. Uh, instead, all of the changes that they made coming out of that giant fiasco uh, have been over the course of the last two years when the previous kicker was announced and really culminated last summer or so in terms of all those in manufacturing, inline manufacturing type changes. Meaning those are changes that Wahoo made to the kicker 2018 and kicker core in the production facilities a year ago uh, that have been incorporated into this already. So like if you were to compare this kicker 2020 with a you know kicker 18 made in January of 2020, uh, they would be almost identical from a quality assurance standpoint. Well, who also says they've got new teams in place and new procedures in place and dedicated teams in factories and all the typical stuff you'd expect a company to say. Uh, and in terms of like people having issues, I'd say that for people buying new kickers, the number of issues has more or less evaporated in the last year, uh, which isn't to say some people don't have issues. Of course, some people do, or that older people don't have issues, meaning older kickers don't have issues. But for new kickers, the noise level of people, both breaking kickers as well as people complaining about it, has pretty much evaporated. Um, in any case, hopefully you found this review interesting. And again, hopefully we'll see how this goes over time, whether it be one month, two months, six months down the road. Uh, by then, maybe we'll have this adapter port thing figured out and uh, something new to test. With that, thanks for watching. Again, whack that like button at the bottom there or hit the subscribe button for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.